Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lau with Kenshan Crafts. Today I will be talking about a very important topic, which is cost of fountain pens. And why are they so expensive? In this video, I will have timestamps for you guys. So if you just want to go to a specific part of this video, you have that to access. So I will be talking about the cost of fountain pens, like what all the factors that go into fountain pens based on what I know and have researched. If there are other factors that go towards the cost of a pen that I did not cover, please put them down in the comments below. I would love to, you know, just get to know more about it uh, from other people who know just as much or more. And then secondly, I will also talk about, um, you know, just comparing our own value of a pen versus it's the actual value of the pen. And then I will talk about limited edition pens and why that model works and why you should also be conscious of it and not fall into that trap of limited edition pens. And then lastly, I will talk about all the retailers because when you talk about the cost of fountain pens, you are dealing with retailers who have to sell you pens at that specific value. Retailers are kind of forced to sell pens to you at a specific value because they are authorized to sell that pen to you and they are required to then provide you with after sale services. They have to sell us a pen at the price that is being asked to be sold and so retailers play a big role in this discussion and so the last bit is talking about all the retailers as well as how you can utilize the sales that each retailer has available for us that I have used to help me to spend a little less than I need to for all the fountain pens. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have not used any of these sales and you don't, you have no need to, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you have a lot of disposable income to not need to use any, um, you know, discounts or buy pens at a heavily discounted price, that's totally completely up to you. And this video may or may not help you, but I, you know, hopefully you'll still find some use in it. But uh, if you are someone who wants to shop for as much discount as you can, or just get the a little bit of discount, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. All right, so let's switch over. I will do a top view just to go over some of the things that I have while we talk about it so you can have something to look at while you're referencing what I talk about. And before we head over to the overhead, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to my channel, and let's get started. Okay, so the first topic is talking about the factors that go into creating a fountain pen so that we can appreciate why a pen is priced the way it is. So basically, uh, I have like six areas here. There's probably more factors that go into the cost of a fountain pen. So if there's something that I missed or didn't touch on, please put them down in the comments below so that we can discuss and have a discussion about this. So the cost of materials are one of the factors that go into the cost of a pen. For example, this is my Leonardo Memento Zero and this is the Persephone model from Endless Pens. The materials that go into this pen are the metal pieces here in order to you know, create these lovely accents to your fountain pens. And then the uh, acrylic rod that is used to make this fountain pen are sold by people that pour these acrylic resins such as Jonathan Brooks. Uh, this one specifically is made by Mackenzie Penworks. I absolutely love his resins. So uh, the resin that is used to make this pen as well as all the gold furnishing here and most importantly the nib and feed are all the materials that go into making this fountain pen. And so generally the cost isn't that much uh, when you look at it. The cost of this nib is a steel nib. I mean, if it's a gold nib, it's gonna be a little more expensive, but not that much. And so the steel nib probably costs like, um, you know, $10 at most. <laughs> Cause really it's a small piece of steel and steel's not that expensive. And then the acrylic rod here, it's about $15 per rod. When you go to um, acrylic makers and um, resin pourers, the rods themselves are between 15 to 20 dollars so this uh, resin itself is about 15 to 20 dollars 
the nib is, um, you know, and these are just all estimates. I don't have these specific numbers. And then uh, the little bits of uh, metal here probably cost another 10 bucks, so maybe uh, 30 to 40 dollars at the most for uh, the materials that I'm seeing here. All right, and then labor costs. I think that's a huge, the biggest part of the cost towards a fountain pen. So labor, in order to turn a rod into this lovely fountain pen, requires someone who knows how to work the machines to turn these pens. And then knowing how to lacquer this pen into this gorgeous pen that it is. I, I absolutely love Leonardo Momento Zeros. The craftsmanship that goes into these pens are just phenomenal. And then for the nib, you need a nib meister or a nib professional to make sure that every nib is tuned, they write well, they're smooth, that they're not misaligned. Like they're putting work and time into making sure that each and every nib is made with quality. And so those factors are the second factor that I have in here. And I think it's, it's probably costs a lot. So let's say to turn this pen probably takes, if the worker knows what they're doing is, and they've been working for a very long time, they probably can turn it really quickly, but you know, I'm not going to go down to the nitty gritty <laughs> of, um, the cost of labor. But basically if I were to make this pen, I would like to be paid well for making something this gorgeous and beautiful. So that, uh, will incur some costs. So I'm going to say maybe $40, $40 towards making uh, this pen. And then the next factor is distributor costs. So not every single fountain pen manufacturer goes through a distributor, but that is a lot of times distributors are part of the formula for getting fountain pens to us. And so distributors are people, they're the middlemen of the fountain pen world. Basically the manufacturers make the pen, distributors work with the manufacturers to get the pens into our country, and then the distributors will work with every single retailer in that country. So that is another form of labor, and so that incurs another cost. And so that probably is about, well, I'll just stick $30. I'll we'll just write the numbers down so I, I don't forget. All right. 30, 40, 20, so that's 50, 90, okay? And then there are, the next factor is marketing. You have to take pictures that look amazing, that will attract people's attention. You have to make videos to promote your um, new pen. Uh, so that, that costs some amount of money, right? Probably I'm gonna put like marketing $10. Because, you know, it, it's, it's not, I'm not saying that you're going to pay somebody $10 to uh, take pictures. I'm saying that out of the, the, the total cost that they use to pay marketing, that each pen gets about $10 of that value. And then the next uh, factor here is shipping costs. Because, you know, pens are made all over the world, and then they're also being sold to the rest of the world, that... We have to ship all of that stuff to each and every person, and that incurs a lot of fees. It's not cheap to just ship out like a thousand pens from Italy to America, and then for the distributors in America to then distribute to the rest of the retailers, that that's gonna cost money. So some of the shipping costs is gonna go into each pen, and I'm just gonna put like $5 here. With these hypothetical numbers, this pen has come up to 70, 90, hundred hundred and five dollars okay the last factor that I have on here is profit so how much profit are they gonna make off of each pen this pen was 200 I think the MSRP was like 250 MS uh, let's see MSRP 250 and I got this on sale for $204. So when you look at that, the profit margin, the profit margin here is, or basically the profit margin is 250 minus 105. So it is about $150 of profit. 
So the profit of the margin of profit is about 150. Therefore, I was able to, um, you know, Endless Pens was able to sell this pen at a discount to me. They're losing $50 in profit, but that's still a lot of profit. They're making about $100 a profit. And so that profit is then split between the retailers, the manufacturer, and the uh, distributors. So the profit is huge. And the, the costs that go into making the pen uh, will vary, of course. But I will say that a good portion of the cost goes towards the profit. Because the margin of profit is so huge that these pens can go on sale, that retailers are able to afford to discount the pen enough, just enough that they could still make profit. And we are getting a pen at a good value. I will talk a little bit more about profit later, but that's basically what I have come down to in terms of the factors that go into a phone to pen. And so when I think of my own future as like when I want to make my own business, like doing a sticker shop or something, <laughs> uh, I have to weigh in all the costs that go into making my products and then selling them and shipping them so that I can make some form of profit to continue doing it. So the profit is important. I and mean, just because they make such a huge profit doesn't mean that it's uh, not necessary. It is very necessary, but because the margin of profit is so huge, we don't always necessarily need to buy the pens at its sale price. So some people don't have to buy right away. Some people will buy it right away and other people will wait for a bigger sale. And that's totally fine. Next, I want to talk about the law of supply and demand in terms of and how it relates to fountain pens, especially limited edition exclusive pens. So on this graph, this green line here is supply, which is the amount of pens that a manufacturer is making. So for example, let's say this pen, so there's 110 of these were made. So let's say that 110, let's say this is zero and 500. Okay. So a hundred of these pens were made, which means that they can jack up the price because it's a limited edition because there's so very few pens that are being made. Now there is, you know, let's say Lamy starts making 500 Lamy Safaris. So the supply is all the way over here, 500. So Lamy can afford to price the pen at a much lower price. So over here is the price, right? The Y axis is the price and the X axis here is supply and demand. So the supply is 500 Lamy Safaris. And so the price of that pen generally would be lower because you have a lot more of them. In general too, you know, like if you look at stuff outside of fountain pens, say back when there was a, uh, a low supply of chickens and eggs because of the bird flu that happened a couple years ago. The, the supply of chickens and eggs were very low, you know, and so the price of our eggs and chickens went up a lot. So that's how the supply and demand works. And so knowing that the law of supply and demand is being used on limited exclusives, they make like 30 of these pens so that they can justify uh, pricing it at a very high cost and continue to do that. This for 200 is pretty reasonable and valid to me. Um, and so because they continue to make it limited, they can keep it at that price, which for most people is okay. Some people it's, it's too much. And so with that model, it's a limited pen. There's only 30 of these made it's going to be $250 when the hypothetical cost of making this pen is about a hundred dollars. And so the, the profit is there knowing this information, whether this information sits uh, well with you or doesn't sit well with you. I'm not trying to say that we should not buy these pens at what they are being priced at. I want us to be able to just be conscious of what we're buying and um, instead of like constantly buying the most, the, the next limited edition pen that we slow down and just think about, is this pen worth it to me and not fall into the trap 
of, of FOMO and limited edition pens because if they can make less of it, they can put a price at it and everyone's going to buy it because <laughs> there's so very few of them. So instead of that mentality, I would encourage us to really look at if this pen is something that we want in our collection rather than, oh, this is a limited pen. I need it. Right? So that's just a, a look at law of supply and demand to help you understand why this limited exclusive model works. <laughs> and it does. So those are the factors and costs to fountain pens. Again, if there are more factors that you guys know of, please put them in the comments. I would love to know and um, you know add to my understanding of factors that go into cost of a fountain pen. Now this leads me to talk about the objective value of a fountain pen and then our subjective value of a pen. This pen probably costs a hundred to make, right? And but that doesn't mean that this pen should be sold at a hundred. I don't think so. That there it, there needs to be some profit to be had in making these pens. So for me, my value of this pen is two hundred because I, I bought it for two hundred and I'm happy with that. But if it was being sold at two fifty, I would probably think, hmm, that might be a little too much right? It's just a 50 extra dollars. Like to some people, that's probably nothing. But to me, I value this pen at 200. I value the rest of my Leonardo's that are in the same model about 200. Some people might value this to be 190, 180. That's completely up to you. And I think that that's completely valid because the margin of profit is pretty high. Um, and for some pens, it's not that high. But I would say that um, as a seller, I'd want to make as much profit as I can, but a, a reasonable, you know, a reasonable profit. To me, this pen is special. Like my value towards a pen, I think that everyone's value towards a pen goes up the more the pen has meaning for them. And the va your value towards a pen goes down if it has no meaning to you. Of course, that is... Taking aside the fact that we all want fountain pens to do what they do, which is to write. But if we set that aside, because obviously a pen should write, my value towards a pen goes up. Like how much I'm willing to pay for it goes up, depending on the aesthetic of the pen, the meaning behind the pen, and what it means to me specifically. Whether that's on a spiritual level, like how it reminds me of um, people in my life or events in my life, stuff like that. Those are the non-tangible values that go towards how much I'm willing to pay towards a pen. And so everybody's value of a pen is different. But when you look at from a retailer or seller perspective, they have to sell the pens at a reasonable cost that will continue to support their business. And that's important to us too as, uh, as, as uh, buyers is that if our retailer friends are not profiting, then they're not going to be able to continue selling us these pens in the long term. So when you look at that balance, a pen is expensive and it it's fine. It should be so that this, uh, this whole fountain pen, uh, hobby or lifestyle can continue into, you know, many years from now, I believe it's totally fine to price the pens as they are and buy them as they are, or, use some discounts and buy them at a discounted price, which I will talk about right now. All right. So whether you are a person who buys the pen at full price, buys, wants to buy a pen at a sm slightly discounted price, or you want to buy the pen at half off, because sometimes that does happen. It's, it's not uncommon that some stores will do that because if a store is selling a pen at half off, it means one, they're able, you know, they're financially able to do that. Or two, they just need to get rid of some pens so that the next batch of new pens comes in. And so it's it's required um, that they decided to put certain pens at half off. And that is still helpful for retailers if we buy the pens at half off because then it gets them out of their shelves so that they have inventory space for new pens. So <laughs> whether you're a person that buys at full price or half price, that is totally fine. All of these are retailers that I have written down and I created a spreadsheet for you guys so that you can just quickly go look at it and um, see the possible ways that you can shop for uh, sales and deals in each of these store. 
some stores will give a 5 to 10% discount because they can. Like I said earlier, the margin of profit is pretty high that they can afford to sell us pens with a little bit of a discount. And I don't think that there's any shame in buying pens at, with a 10% discount. You should completely do it. <laughs> so I have Atlas uh, at the top here. I want to just talk quickly about each one of these and kind of share how to navigate the website to get to these very specific sales. So I am an affiliate with Atlas Stationers. I love Atlas Stationers. They are a wonderful, wonderful family owned company. I got the opportunity to meet uh, Brian, Brendan, um, Crystal, um, Mama T as they call it. And uh, Brian and Brendan's dad at the Chicago Pen Show. That was such a great time, such a blast, and I loved talking to every single one of them. And so Atlas Stationers is the retailer that I support 100%, and I always send you guys to them because they have such great sales and deals. So Atlas Stationers is, uh, st they are in Chicago, Illinois, and the best thing about Atlas is their last chance section it's it's basically a place for you to, the last chance to buy a pen that is not selling so well and you know there's just pens that don't sell well and that's fine and so atlas has a last chance section where they have pens that are half off and all you have to do is put in the code lc50 which stands for last chance um so lc50 will reduce your that pen by half Sometimes Atlas will just automatically have them half off already, so you don't have to use a code. So that's one way that I shop pens at a really, really great price. Sometimes it might be a pen that you've always been eyeing. So like for me, I bought my Visconti uh, Kaleido from Atlas Stationers. This pen came out like fall of 2022. <laughs> and it was $632 and I'm just like this pen is gorgeous but I am not dishing out 600 for this pen and wow it went onto the last chance section and I bought it right away instead of paying 632 I paid about 350 for this pen and that is a value I'm willing to pay for this pen I mean like I probably would value this about 400 500 uh, but not 6.30, and so Atlas had this on the last chance section, which they may or may not have lost some profit, but they can do that, which means that uh, it was good for their business to get this out of their inventory. So it's not in my hands. I love this pen so, so much. <laughs> so uh, last chance, Atlas, Atlas Station has last chance. Definitely, definitely check that all the time. And you can uh, shop through my link to help support me. <laughs> I have my code LAO10. It will save you 10% off most items. And then sometimes Atlas will have specific sales during holidays, and that 10% will be increased to either 15 or 20%. Usually the 20% is strictly for like Fountain Pen Day. So most of the time it'll just be bumped up to 15. Okay. The next place I like to shop at is Apple Boom. I love Apple Boom and I love Annabelle. <laughs> My conversation with her, I, I just, she's such a wonderful person. And knowing that Annabelle was the person to tune and smooth my special Aurora Volterra, Aurora 88 fountain pen, makes this pen that much more special. She works with Apple Boom as their Nib Meister and she tunes and smooths all your pens if you choose that as an option. And then Apple Boom also has a code FRIEND to save you 10%. And if you review a pen after you buy it from them, you get a 50% discount code to your email right afterwards. And then you can use that anytime in the future for any purchase from Apple Boom. Apple Boom does do Fountain Pen Day sales and holiday sales from time to time, like their Blue Monday sale that I didn't even know about. <laughs> um, but in my spreadsheet, I will update the sales whenever they are coming up so that you guys can always go back and check this spreadsheet. So save this spreadsheet, bookmark it, uh, bookmark this video <laughs> so you can come back to it. Uh, but yeah, Apple Boom does do holiday sales and event sales, as well as that 15% discount code if you review a pen or an item. 
So I reviewed this pen and I was able to then buy the, um, oh, this one. <laughs> I was able to buy the Glauco Cambon for 15% off. And that was amazing. Okay. Next on the list here is Goulet pens. Now I have my list in alphabetical order, except for the t first two, because I'm an affiliate with Atlas Stationers and Pen Boutique. So I put those at the top, but then everything else is in alphabetical order. Next on the list here is Goulet pens. They are a lovely, lovely family owned uh, company by you know Brian Goulet and his uh, best friend Drew. They work really well together, they work closely, and they have such an amazing following of people who love them for who they are and what they do. And Goulet Pens does not have a lot of big sales at, like some of the fountain pen retailers that I have listed here, but they constantly are um, providing so much valuable information and content out there for all of us fountain pen enthusiasts. And so I believe that that is one way that they continue to have devoted people who are always willing to uh, stand by Goulet and their service and their products. But Goulet does have a um, bottom shelf and a sale section. So you can access those if you want pens to be a, a bit of a cheaper price if you shop from Goulet Pens. Next here is Pen Boutique. I recently became an affiliate with Pen Boutique. I just love Pen Boutique. Like, Lena is the owner of Pen Boutique. She is such a wonderful woman. And then um, Layla uh, as well on Instagram. She just made this most... Uh, she just came up with this uh, Benu Talisman that's going to come up at the end of this month. It is gorgeous. It's called Firefly Stone. I cannot wait to get that pen because it's got all the colors that I love mixed in such a whimsical way. I just love it. So I will be getting that pen hopefully uh, very soon and I can share it with you guys as well. Um, that is one pen that I feel like is uh, it speaks to me and I'm willing to pay the price that that Benu pen is being asked for. So Pen Boutique, I do have my code and it changes from time to time, but for now it's still Kenton Crafts and you can get 5% off your order. And you know, I earn commission uh, with all my affiliates uh, when, whenever you use my code or shop through my link. So thank you to those of you that have been using my Atlas and Pen Boutique codes. And then Pen Chalet uh, is another store that I've bought from a few times. I've bought their ink samples. Uh, so they are a great place to buy ink samples from. They don't have the most variety of ink samples, but they're still great. And Penchley has this, uh, like everyone can participate. If you refer somebody to shop at Penchley through your link, uh, then you get $5 or $10, one of those two. And every person, you know, that you refer to Penchley, that money accumulates and you, you have to use it within, a, I think, a year or two with that money that you can spend on Penchelet. So that's a great way that Penchelet allows people to earn money by referring people. Vanessa is another retailer that does sell fountain pens, but they're really well known for their ink samples. I always buy from Vanessa <laughs> for my ink samples because they provide us with four milliliters, which is more than enough to test and use for a good while. Um, as I have been in my fountain pen journey for a while, I found that ink samples are more, like, much more economical <laughs> for myself because I don't use up a lot of my bottled inks. They're way prettier, but they're not, like, I don't think I'll ever use them up. So ink samples are allows you to try out a lot more varieties of inks and still spend a lot less. I'm not an affiliate with Vanessa yet, but I hope to be so that I can give you guys a 5% or 10% discount on your inks. All right, and then the next one I have here is Yoseka Stationery. Yoseka is such a wonderful and lovely store. They have some of the best people to work for them, and uh, Daisy is so sweet. I love her so much. I really, really wish I could go to the New York, their Stationery Fest, but that's just one too many trips that I cannot take work out for. So uh, it's sad, but I think they're in August and that's around the time I'm going to San Francisco Pen Show anyways. So whoever's going to the station, Yoseka Stationery or Stationery Fest, 
um, let me know how your experiences are. Uh, so Yoseka does not ha do sales. Um, I know that for a fact. I have not been able to buy anything there um, with any small sales, but that's totally fine. Yoseka has a wonderful story behind their store and their customer service is just impeccable. What I will buy at Yoseka Stationery are exclusives that they created and that resonate with me. But outside of that, I probably won't buy from Yoseka as much, uh, except for their ink samples. I love their ink samples. Yoseka does do great ink samples as well. And they're very eco-friendly. They provide you with a little uh, cardboard box to return those ink sample vials back to them. And they will either recycle or reuse them. Drum Ghouls is here next. I have not shopped from Drum Ghouls before. I think I only bought from them once. I bought uh, swatch cards from them when they were on really good sale. And I was like, hmm, what is this store? <laughs> but they are pretty big. They're a pretty big store. I just haven't shopped from them much. If you are in Houston, Texas, or like in Texas, that is, this is one of the local stores. So Drum Ghouls does do sales from time to time right now. I think they do have a Memorial Day sale, so do check them out. Next up is Wonder Pens, and that is Wonder Pens is stationed in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> when I was researching all of these like retailers to you know create this video, I looked up where Wonder Pens was, and it was so close to the venue that I was visiting when I went to see my partner in Toronto, and it was like a five minute drive from that place. I was just like, damn it, <laughs> I could have gone to see Wonder Pens and check out the whole store. Oh, that would have been great. But don't worry, I will be visiting my partner again in Toronto sometime in the future. So Wonder Pens is definitely on my list to check out. Um, I have heard only great stories about Wonder Pens. They are a lovely family business, I think. But lovely small business. And I definitely will buy from them. But they do have a really high... Uh, threshold for free shipping. It's 250 Canadian dollars, I think. Because I can buy from all these other US places, it's harder for me to justify buying from Wonder Pens, but uh, I think I am definitely going to buy it in person <laughs> to avoid the shipping costs when I go visit Toronto again. Next up is True Fay. I haven't bought from them, but I, I hear good things about them too. They do have some sales uh, and some really, really rare pens to buy from so i definitely will check them out some more next up is fountain pen hospital i know that Lori from uh time with tata she's been to fountain pen hospital pretty sure that this place is a really nice place they also do fountain pen repairs so if your fountain pen is out of warranty uh you can get it fixed at the fountain pen hospital so that's a really nice thing about uh this retail shop Next up is Cult Pens. Now, Cult Pens is stationed in the UK. Uh, Cult Pens is well known for their very, very cheap diamond inks. So if you love diamond and you want a lot of diamond inks, buy from Cult Pens. That's the only place that you really should be buying diamond inks from is Cult Pens. Uh, of course, you can buy it anywhere else, but Cult Pens has the cheapest diamond uh, prices. And they also have really, really good ink sales from time to time it's where it's like you buy five inks, you get one free or you buy four inks, get one free. But you do have to buy a lot to avoid the free sh uh, to get free shipping. But otherwise, like the shipping is not terrible. It is kind of high, but uh, Cult Pens does take a while to uh, ship stuff out. When I bought my pen and inks from Cult Pens, it took about almost a month to get to me. <laughs> uh, but the, the sale was so good. It was so, so good. I bought from them during uh, Black Friday sale. Uh, next here is Zaf Pens. So Zaf Pens is kind of uh, very underrated, like not well known. Like I think to a lot of you, Zaf Pens is probably very new. Uh, they are based in Athens, Greece, but they are so lovely to work with. They are the only fountain pen retailer that has gift wrapped all my fountain pens without me even asking. <laughs> Cult Pens does free uh, free gift wrapping, but only on certain pens. But you have to purchase the 
gift wrap option for most other pens if you want them gift wrapped but zap pens just wraps it up for you like whether or not it's a gift it feels like it's a gift to you <laughs> and so i love zap pens so much for gift wrapping all their pens like they go above me on for that and sometimes they do have pens that are really really well priced compared to other retailers here in america but that is pretty general um Retailers in Europe tends to have some pens that are cheaper than pens in American retailers. And that's just the way that the economy works. And so I will sometimes buy pens from Europe because it is cheaper. <laughs> uh, Stilo and Stile, or Stilo e Stile, uh, they are a an Italian-owned retail shop. Uh, lovely people to work with. I don't think I've shopped from them before. I wanted to get their... Via Latea Leonardo, but that sold out way too fast. And I, my stupid uh, <laughs> brain thought that the Italian time was 12 p.m. my time, but it was actually 11 a.m. my time, so I missed out. In just less than an hour, that pen sold out, so I could not buy from Stilo Stile. But the good thing about Stilo Stile that I like is that uh, on pre-ordered pens, they sometimes will allow you to save 10% if you pre-order online. So that's a great thing about Stilo Stile. Next is Stilo Grafica or Casa della Stilo Grafica. That is another Italian store. Uh, they also did the same thing as Stilo Stile, where if it's a pre-order pen, sometimes you can pre-order for 10% off. Next up is Flax Pen to Paper. This is a really nice small uh, retail shop in Los Angeles. I met Flax Pen to Paper at the San Francisco Pen Show last year. Uh, Jeremy and Jeremy, <laughs> the two people that uh, are running this shop and they own it now. I think they're friends of the actual owners. And they're just so sweet. <laughs> I wish I could um, uh, visit their store someday. I think I will probably go to either Los Angeles um, or I think it was like there's another city somewhere around this area that I'm going to go with my partner to see their dad. Um, if it is close to Los Angeles, I might visit Flax Pen to Paper in person, but I most likely will see them again in the San Francisco Pen Show, and I would love to support them there. But yeah, uh, they do sales from time to time for holidays, like Memorial Day sale this weekend. Check them out. <laughs> um... And it, I mean, if you're in the Los Angeles area, go check them out as well, unless you probably already know. <laughs> All right, next one is Pen Venture. So Pen Venture is, uh, Emmy is the owner of Pen Venture. He's a, such a wonderful guy. He makes, uh, he has his own YouTube channel as well, and he talks about luxurious expensive pens <laughs> that I most likely will never ever own. Uh, but yeah, it's, he's stationed in Romania. He's the only one, um, that's in that area and he tunes every single pen that goes out. So if you like your pens to write wetter or drier, you just tell him in the notes and he's going to tune it that way for you. And so he makes sure that the pen is tuned and smoothed and to your wetness liking. That's an amazing thing about Emmy at Pen Venture. So I got my, um... I got my Leonardo Memento Zero uh, Romanian Night, or no, what is it? Um, Arabian Nights. One of the most beautiful resins. It, I didn't love <laughs> the resin that I got, and that's the thing with resins, is sometimes you might not like it. Uh, for me, I didn't like it, but I know that that was such a beautiful limited edition pen. Someone's going to love it, and I, I gave it to the right person. Or I sold it to the right person who loves it. And so, yeah, Emmy Pen Venture, great, great uh, store. He doesn't do a lot of sales, but he does have a sales section. Um, and so you should definitely check out that sales section if you're looking for pens that are uh, a little discounted. And it'll help him to get rid of those pens from his inventory anyways. Next is Gold Spot Pens. So I love Gold Spot Pens too. <laughs> Tom is just such an amazing person. He works in the uh, social media and YouTube aspect of Gold Spot Pens. I really enjoy listening to him talk in his podcasts and stuff. And Gold Spot Pen has a lot of ways to get pens on sale. They do have a 10% discount code. Uh, just like Atlas, some pens are excluded from this uh, discount code, and Leonardo is one of them. 
That made me so sad. <laughs> I was like, I would love to buy your Leonardo pens and use the coupon code. But you know what? Goldspot has probably the best prices for uh, Leonardo pens. So that's fine. I bought the Foresta Umbra. I bought the Leonardo Momento Zero Foresta Umbra from Goldspot pens. This is probably one of my favorite Leonardo's. This resin is the most beautiful earth toned uh, resin ever. And I just applaud <laughs> Tom for making this gorgeous, gorgeous resin with uh, Tim from Mackenzie Penworks. It's so, so beautiful. I just, I just get so happy looking at it all the time. And I'm a Capricorn, so like, I think of forests as the earth part of Capricorns and uh, the groundedness of the forest and, you know, being of an earth element. So this pen to me is that calm nature part of me. And so I have a lot of value in this pen. Like this, this pen has a lot of meaning for me. And for Tom and Goldspot to sell this for just... 199 like that's that's amazing most of the Leonardo exclusives are at least over 200 and for 199 this is great for me I just love it um but yeah so gold spot pens does have a a uh, weekly dip which every week they put a few different pens in there and they'll remove you know the previous weeks and they are heavily discounted between like 10 to 50 percent off so check out their weekly dip every single week if you want to look for a pen that you've been probably looking for and can afford now that it's in the weekly dip like i said earlier sorry <laughs> i just got sidetracked but goldspot does have a 10 percent discount code which you can find if you go uh, watch Penboy Roy's podcast. He does post the the discount code. I think right now the discount code is Steamboat, but it changes every so often. So go check his videos. Okay, so yeah, I love gold spot pens. <laughs> uh, next is Pen Realm. So that's the infamous Kirk Spear. I did not know that Kirk Spear had a store as well. Like. Uh, you know, a couple months ago until, like, I started uh, seeing him and his store. Uh, I think at the San Francisco Pen Show, I was just like, huh, he's stationed at Pen Realm. What is Pen Realm? <laughs> so I didn't know what Pen Realm was during the time in San Francisco, but now I know. And Pen Realm is Kirk Spears' uh, retail shop. They do, they are authorized to sell uh, a lot of pen brands. And so if you love Kirk Spear, you loved working uh, with his nib uh, grinding or if you don't know about him he does have a store named pen realm and you can buy the pens on his website as well as getting a specific grind on that pen as you buy so that's amazing in terms of sales i don't know if they have too many sales uh, but they're great wonderful wonderful people anderson pens these last two i forgot about <laughs> <laughs> but I, I then remembered them. So Anderson Pens, they also do like a weekly podcast and sometimes Sunday brunch um, videos. And so they have a YouTube presence as well. And they also do weekly contests where you just comment down below. And then the next week they choose a random winner and you can get like 20 to $25 store credit on your next purchase. So that's a great thing that Anderson Pens does to the community every week. And I, I they're a lovely family owned uh, company retail shop as well. Uh, their daughter is working with them. I, it's just so sweet. I love watching their videos. Um, so yeah, you can also buy um, from Anderson Penn. They have a retail shop, uh, a physical shop, and online shop. Uh, they're actually Appleton, Wisconsin, so they're, they're like next door to me. <laughs> All right, and then last but not least, of the ones that I know, uh, Jet Pens also sells fountain pens, but they're mostly like a stationary store for all kinds of uh, stationary users. So fountain pens is just a small fraction of what they sell. Um, and so if you're not a fountain pen enthusiast, I think you're most likely shopping from Jet Pens. <laughs> but if you are a fountain pen enthusiast, um, I will probably say that Jet Pens will not be the, you know, you won't get the most value out of your fountain pen purchase from jet pens because I have not seen any sales from my um, 
purchases with them. I don't even remember what the last thing I bought from them was, but it's a while ago. So yeah, so those are all the retailers that I know of and I've shopped at a good portion of them. And these are just lovely, lovely small um, to you know, medium-sized businesses, retail shops that provide us these fountain pens. And they are authorized, which means that they have to sell these pens and provide us with after after sale services which you know involves the warranty so like if there's a defect with a pen that they have to help us and work with us through figuring out a solution for this pen or helping us guide us to the people to work on the warranty issues i want to just like leave a final note that fountain pens are expensive because they are a luxury brand and you know they're a luxury item and generally speaking, the supply of fountain pens is a lot less than, say, groceries or toilet paper, you know, stuff like that, where it's a little cheaper and we buy it in mass quantities. But fountain pens, they are a luxury item. You, like, really only get one of this. Like, for me, I would not buy, like, five of the same um like, I wouldn't buy five Aurora Volteras. <laughs> I'll buy six different Leonardo's because they look different. <laughs> but I wouldn't buy six of the same one. No. So it's it's a luxury item. It's limited, you know, a lot more limited than other uh, products in the world. And so the cost of these fountain pens go up because of that. And as well as all the other factors that go into making this fountain pen possible for us. So whether you want to buy your purchase, uh, whether you want to purchase your fountain pens at the full retail value or at the discounted value, just know that a lot went into making these fountain pens. And the more you spend on your fountain pens, I hope that the more this, the pen is of value to you. Uh, whether that is spiritual meaning, it reminds you of lovely memories, or it has, you know, just a, a deeper connection to you than other pens, that the price you paid for is completely worth it to you. And that price is totally up to you. Nobody else. <laughs> All right. Well, that is my video on the cost of fountain pens and how you can uh, shop a little bit uh, more smarter when you are buying fountain pens. And again, just because you bought fountain pens at full price doesn't mean it's not smart. It's just your choice. And so, but I just wanted to be able to provide this information for anybody that does want to shop a little smarter. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me in this discussion about fountain pen cost and um, valuing your pens at different price points. I hope this has been very helpful for you all. I would love to have a conversation with you guys around this topic and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.